I'm sorry. Hello friends, it's me. And today, let's uncover, let's just pose, and let's review the master who controls DHMIS. Don't harm me, I'm scared. I'm scared. A turn of the crank, a spin of the wheel, fear, dread, excitement. What is it you feel? The cycle resets, we live once more To repeat the mistakes we've made before So again, we join our yellow friend Remember, my dears, death is never the end Ooh. The tone changed <gasps> Come on, Film Theory Hello Internet, welcome to Film Theory Hello Internet, welcome to Film Theory Hi, but come on, the jump scare? Seriously? The best theory show online provided you log in first. I, I don't know the password. Too bad for you, I, I guess. For everyone who does remember their password, today we're diving back into the twisted world of Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. In case Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, DH. If you need a quick refresher, Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, or DHMAS, started as a classic YouTube horror series that mixed Tickle Me Elmo with Dead Space. It was children's edutainment with a heavy dose of existential dread. But then, earlier this year, DHMAS did the impossible. It got itself a full-blown, real-life TV show on the British Channel 4. And oh boy, is this thing full of cryptic secrets and hidden mysteries. For one, this guy right here, the yellow guy, he's probably a dead kid. Because, of course, he's a dead kid. This is a theory channel. Channel, after all, we've got our standards. In this case, we theorize that Yellow Guy is the puppet representation of a child named David. A child who was tragically killed by his mother, Leslie, during a car accident. The dollhouse and puppet world of DHMAS that we now see is just Leslie trying to come to grips with this traumatic event from her past and move on. But that's hardly been the only theory that's popped up around this new series. One major unsolved mystery revolves around these. Strange symbols that appear in various locations all throughout the six-episode run. Actually, Strange and unique symbols. First noticed these back during the fly teaser in spring of 2022 as one of the symbols appeared on a sticky note in the fridge. At the time, we had nothing to go off of, and our resident chemistry expert staff was able to confirm that it wasn't some sort of chemical structure. So we filed it away as a weird little detail that might pop up again, and pop up again it did, loyal theorists. These symbols are everywhere on the show. On computers, on refrigerators, on blackboards, and most notably of all, on the cover of the mysterious book that Leslie gives yellow guy in the final episode of the season. You wanted this, didn't you? And while at first these little drawings might seem just like random shapes used to decorate the scene, in reality they're symbols with a deeper meaning that can absolutely be solved. And that but how do you decode it? How? That's important, because these characters are clearly stuck in a cycle, Ow. and decoding the book might be their only hope in breaking that cycle. Don't forget Ow. to change your Ow. batteries, loyal theorists, because it's theory time! It's theory time! You'll see. Now, while I'd love to sit here in the recording closet and tell you that today's episode is going to be me solving the symbol mystery, I can't do that, because someone else beat me to the punch. You see, as I was doing research for this episode, I stumbled across a series of videos produced by the channel Rem Games here on YouTube. A series of videos where he claimed do exactly what I was trying to do. Solve the coded message on the front of the book. And after watching the videos, you know what? I think he pretty much nailed it. Me and the rest of Team Theorists loved the way that he solved the mystery, so instead of just rehashing it all ourselves only to come to the same conclusions, we decided to invite him over today to represent his research in the episode. Hey, Rem. Hey, I'm Remy. Hey. Yes, like the rat. I'm a YouTube gamer and theorist who tolerates FNAF and uses glitchy text in my video titles. Welcome to the family, sir. Some tells me you're gonna fit right in. I also like the internet creepypasta stuff, which is how I got involved with the whole don't hug me mystery. You see, while I was watching, I noticed a few of the symbols showing up over and over again. Obviously, mm -hmm. the biggest and most important one is going to be on the cover of the book that Leslie gives to Yellow Guy, but you'll notice that inside that big symbol are a bunch of smaller ones. Ones that we see repeated in other parts of the world. For example, oh. this symbol here on the top right can be seen on the spine of the yellow book in the show's intro. Or this symbol here, which appears in both the show's trailer as well as this spatial distribution mm. that Yellow Guy drafts up in the final episode. Clearly, they mean something. They're put in those places with intent. But how do you start to figure out what they could possibly mean? Well, you look for instances where a symbol is directly related to something someone says. And that's exactly what we get in episode four. Try my oh, so it's like case and point references. Clever. Very clever. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
That inverted P is Duck's name. This is further supported by the fact that during Duck's funeral in episode two, we see that same symbol on his plane. Again, the symbol and Duck are connected. Exactly. Oh. But you know where else it shows up? Here, on this title card from episode three, Family. But you see what mm -hmm. else is there? It's another one of these symbols. The one with a bunch of circles and curved lines. So knowing that the one symbol represents Duck, what have we just seen happen to him in the story? Well, Red Guy has joined him for dinner back at the house. That curvy symbol represents Red Guy. That's why it's their two names on this title card and why Yellow Guy isn't mentioned. And again, that's not the only time that we see this symbol making sense as Red Guy's name. We see the symbol appear again in the trash of Red Guy's office during episode one, Jobs. Clearly, this is him throwing away paperwork oh. that's been addressed to him. There's also the sticky note that's on the fridge that I mentioned earlier, which would make sense if he's marking something on the fridge as his. So lastly, we need Yellow Guy's name. And while we don't have as one-to-one -one evidence to show this, we can mm -hmm. figure it out by process of elimination. When the show shows a wide shot of Leslie's dollhouse in episode six, we can see mm -hmm. three symbols written on the walls. The first is Duck's name. We know that for sure. The second is Red Guy's name, which we feel highly confident in, which means that the last symbol here, this little robot face with a pointy tail, by process of elimination, that must be Yellow Guy. Which now brings us back oh. to the mystery book. Within that one huge symbol on the cover, you can see all three characters are represented. But why? What are the creators trying to say with this new language? And what are these other symbols connected to our main three? Well, if we look at the way that the cover is constructed, it can actually tell us a lot. This is going to be a massive oversimplification of some complicated linguistics, but there are a lot of different ways to make a written language. For example, mm. English yeah. and other hello. romantic Bonjour, hola, ciao. Ha hello, hello. languages are made of um, yeah, French, Spanish, English, German, Chinese, I forgot. I'm sorry, I from alphabets. They have letters that you can put together to form syllables or words, and then you can use those to make up more complicated ideas. But that's not the only way to make a written language. Another major way is by using logograms, where different symbols represent individual words. Kanji in Japanese and ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics, those are examples of logographic writing systems. Oh, Egyptian hieroglyphics. Clever! But if you take it one step further than logograms, you get ideograms, which are symbols meant to represent entire ideas. So stuff like numbers, or the symbols that we use in math, those are ideograms. The number one represents the entire concept of one, just like the plus symbol represents the entire concept of addition. Languages made up from ideograms are able to tell very complex stories with relatively few symbols. If you want an example, we can look at UNLWS, or the Unker Nonlinear Writing System. Using this, we can break this big squiggly line into smaller squiggly lines, each with their own individual meaning, like me or eats. But put together, Ooh. this symbol means I eat a large fish. So, Ooh. given how the individual symbols on the cover of Leslie's book all flow into one another, it would make sense then that the DHMIS language works in a similar way to UNLWS. Yup, the individual symbols each convey an idea that can be put together to make a much longer and more complicated story. This would... Oh my goodness, they are spending so much time to, to decipher, to decode a fictional language. Wow. Great job, actually. <laughs> Great job. Also explain. It's a fictional language, eh? Wow. And why it took Red Guy so many keystrokes to type out Yellow Guy's name in the computer episode. Maybe it's my name. Try my name. Remember the hyphen. He has to combine a bunch of symbols to create the idea of Yellow Guy. Also, it's, you know, just a funny joke. Yeah, that too, I suppose. Sometimes some things are in there just to be funny. No, never. We take everything way too seriously here. There is no such thing as a joke or an Easter egg in this house. No, sir. Just a bunch of sloppy lore. Don't you mean lore? Not bad. Why, thank you. But what's... Oh my god, he's definitely a fan of MatPat. <laughs> instead, instead of saying lore, he's gonna say the lore. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What's it all mean? Sure, I'm we've sorry. decoded the three major symbols. We know how the writing system works, but what's it all trying to say? Honestly, I'm not sure. I think it relates to those windows in Leslie's room. I'm actually glad you brought those up because they're one thing that you kind of glossed over in your videos and something that I haven't seen anyone else fully address. Just to fill everyone in, when Yellow Guy first enters Leslie's room, he walks past a series of three windows, each with an item from one of the episodes on display. There's a square window with the chuddle dollops from episode three family, a diamond window with the shovel from episode 
episode 2 death and a circular window with the batteries from episode 6 electricity. But notice the lining on those windows. They're colored green, red, and yellow, which obviously is going to line up with the characters in the series, duck, red guy, and yellow oh, guy. But the items don't really seem to line up with the colors they're assigned to. I mean, sure, the batteries in the yellow window make sense because in that final episode, yellow guy changes his batteries and suddenly becomes smart, but duck can't open the bag of chuddle dollops in episode three. Now, let's crack into these chuddy D's. Open up. Open up. I can't. In the end, it's red guy who manages to open the bag. I think things might go a little differently this time. I guess we could show- I want this! I know! And the same thing happens with the shovel. Despite being in the red window, red guy's the only one to never interact with the shovel at all in episode two. Yellow guy uses it to dig up duck, and duck ultimately uses it to kill his doppelganger. Uh, uh. Actually, no. Four doesn't work. There's three of us. So why would these items be associated with characters who failed to use them on the show? Well, I suspect it's a hint to the greater story that's happening here. The same story that's being told by the book. You see, Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared is a story all about characters stuck in a loop. Not only does Leslie outright say this at the end of episode five. No matter how much the wheels turn, the journey always ends up back at home. Other characters openly acknowledge how repetitive their lives are. All we do is, is sit around and then some guy comes and tells us about banks or vegetables. The cycle really seems to be getting to Red Guy. We live in an actual nightmare! And of course, there's the picture of Yellow Guy walking up the stairs as he's walking up the stairs. This is clearly not the first time he's done this, despite having no oh. explicit memory or knowledge of it in the past. So if we're in a cycle that repeats over and over, maybe there are parts of the story that play out differently in different repetitions of of that cycle. During this iteration of the loop, Yellow Guy ended up with the batteries, while Duck mm -hmm. used the shovel to kill his doppelganger and Red Guy opened the chuddle dollops. But clearly things aren't quite right. Things didn't turn out for the best, and that's because things didn't align with what Leslie has up here in her room. Red Guy <sighs> didn't end up using the shovel, and Duck doesn't open the chuddle dollops himself. That would actually make sense. We know for a fact that things can change during each loop. First of all, we see recurring characters and props from the YouTube series appearing here on the TV show. Things mm -hmm. like the clock teacher, the notepad, the computer teacher, and even the food guy, they're all here, but are used in very different ways. There's also repeated references to Clay Hill, the town that was supposed to be the focus of DHMIS's original TV pilot. It's here, crossed out on the blackboard of the big boy's room, as well as here during the transportation episode. What about just, just down here? I'm sorry, that place doesn't exist anymore. It shows that the cycle has some level of awareness of the past, but with small mm -hmm. changes in each run. Inside joke or lore? And then here, just take a look at this house from the beginning of episode 5 compared to this house from the beginning of episode 6. Notice anything different? For the house in the episode 6 intro, there are additional bricks on the corners. All the curtains and windows are different colors, and there are fewer trees around the house when compared with episode 5. Oh, something similar to, um, same thing, but different. This would make sense because this is a different house in a different loop. Remember, <sighs> Leslie has to reset everything at the end of episode 5. And this, my friends, is what I suspect the book is for. It's telling Yellow Guy the correct series of events that he and his friends need to do, explaining what Duck needs to do with the chuddle dollops, what Red Guy needs to do with the shovel, what Yellow Guy needs to do with the batteries. It's telling Yellow Guy and us the story that needs to happen in order for everything to move forward. We even get hints of it on the cover thanks to the pictures embossed in the leather. There's a lot of stuff on here that we can recognize from the first six episodes. Duck's decapitated head, Yellow Guy's dismembered hand, the shovel, the batteries, the coin, but a lot of it just doesn't quite fit right. Notice the worms. Eagle! Sorry, notice the eagles around the coin and battery. That character had nothing to do with either of those stories. There's also this weird decapitated Yellow Guy head on here, something that, again, we didn't see in the first six episodes. Why are all of these markings on the book if they never happen? Well, maybe it's because they're supposed to happen. This book is literally a script for the right series of events to help break the loop, to end the suffering, the torment, so everyone can just move on. Speaking of scripts, you know one thing that never quite sat right with me throughout these first six episodes? Grolton and Hoveris. At random points throughout the episodes, the show just takes a break from the action so the characters can sit down and watch clips from this in-universe Wallace and Gromit spinoff. It is weird, it is random, and the sequences can last for a surprisingly long time. I just realized... Brother's visit isn't until next month. Ow. Grolton is the dog. No, Grolton is the man, Hovris is the dog. 
I reckon. But you know that when a creator chooses to include something so prominently in their series, you gotta ask yourself why. So I did. Have you noticed who worked on these episodes? Leslie. In episode mm -hmm. three, we can actually see that she's credited as a script editor for Golden and Havras. Oh. And that's interesting because it means that in DHMIS, Leslie holds a position of creative power. So if she's a script editor and also happens to be handing Yellow Guy a book that explains everything, it's likely the book is a script for the correct sequence of events. The only question left is why? What's it all for? Well, it might be due to forces beyond their control. You see, during one of my rewatches, I noticed this offhand joke in episode two as Lamp explains what he thinks happens in the afterlife. Well, something tells me that when we die, we go into the center of the earth and we must relive our lives, but as a performance for a new super race known as the council. And every time you get it right, you get a pound. When I first watched the show, that always struck me as a bit weird, an off the wall joke that was just so strange that it didn't make any sense but yeah this joke this joke kind of weird and strange very strange <laughs> Then I realized that this is how episode one ends. Oh yes, I almost forgot. You've earned this. <laughs> Duck is given the DHMIS equivalent of a one pound coin while everyone else is left penniless. Now, this could be Duck's digital currency based around respect, but if we take what the lamp said at face value, this must mean that they weren't being paid by the council for their parts in reenacting this part of their lives. We've theorized in the past that Red Guy has a creative soul, but in his jobs episode, he winds up as a manager of the factory. Knowing what we know about him, he would never be a manager at a factory like that. He didn't do it right. Same thing with Yellow Guy. As the episode goes, Yellow Guy grows old in the factory and ultimately retires to be with his family. But if Yellow Guy is really David, then he wouldn't have lived nearly as long as we see him live during the storyline. It appears that whatever happened in this episode with Duck was a part of the correct order of events needed for the series to progress, which also means the council are the people deciding it all. But then who or what is the council? Well, at first I thought that maybe the council represented the cast and crew of the series, the creatives working to make this show a reality. After all, the show breaks the fourth wall constantly, with performers, producers, and directors visible to us as the audience. Like here, during episode four, where we can see several puppeteers, Red Guy's actor, even co-creator Becky Sloan during the episode itself. Or here, in episode six, where Yellow Guy sees two of the puppeteers piloting the teachers in the big boy room. But then I remember that there's a level in the house above Leslie's room, accessible via a stairwell hidden in the back corner. And so if Leslie is a creator of sorts, then what's above creators in a creative industry? Well, that's the people with the money. Producers who won't proceed with scripts and fun dumb until you get it right. Heck, you could even argue that there may even be a level above them, the audience, who seem to be more than willing to watch the same stories over and over and over again with just slight variations. But also an audience who immediately blows up and gets angry when something is just slightly off. It's funny, the Don't Hug Me I'm Scared YouTube series spent so much of its hidden mystery talking about creatives and how money corrupted what should be a pure form of art with kids' entertainment. I was actually surprised that the TV show seemed to veer so far away from that sort of meta commentary, since it seems so important to the creators in that original series. I suppose we just needed to look a little bit harder, didn't we? Is this, is this when we get to say the thing? Yep, this is when we say the thing. But, but hey, hey, that's just, just a theory. theory. A film theory. theory. And, and cut. cut. And a huge, huge thank you to Rem Games for joining us on this episode and sharing his incredible research with us. Please do me a favor, go over to his channel right now, it's linked on screen, and watch his six-part series covering DHMAS. He goes into so much thank more you. detail about stuff we didn't have the chance to cover today. Let me tell you, he is digging even further into the mysteries of the series and other series. So go, give him a watch, and then do me a favor, comment on his latest video, Something Funny. Make sure your comment includes the words Fluffernutter, because I just think that's a really funny troll. Word. Thank you so much for having me on. It's been an honor being here. I'd like to thank my dog, my fish, my lobster, my dodo bird, and Toucan Sam. Over on dodo my bird. channel, I have a bunch of videos that are theory-based, analysis-based, and whatever else your heart desires, including a few things that any of you who are theorists might want to check out. And I like to interact with all of you, so don't be shy to communicate. Again, thank you so much to the entire team behind the film theory videos. This has been super fun and absolutely amazing. And lastly, as we wrap things up, this is one final reminder of our Film Theory Holiday Merch. The awesome Film Theory Academy hoodie to keep you nice and cozy this winter, the matching Screen Fiend t-shirt, this mysterious little analog horror VHS plushie that can terrify you when you snuggle up. It also may have secrets of its own to unlock.
Just make sure you get your orders in either today or tomorrow to ensure delivery before Christmas. Again, all of that is down on the merch shelf or in the description. And as always, I'll see you next week. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you find this video quite interesting to watch. Ram Games, thank you so much for this incredible story that you brought, brought along with us. Thank you, you did a great job into doing this. So yeah, <clears throat> let's do the thing, let's do the thing. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you do like this video, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel and comment down below if you have any share us. Don't forget to follow my channel. I hope to see you in my next video. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. Uh, uh, cut. Sorry. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Subscribe. I want to see the last part, the, the meme in the back. So go, give him a watch, and then do me a favor, comment on his link. It goes into so much more series. I suppose we just needed to look a little bit harder, didn't we? Is this, is this when we get to say the I'm thing? I'm yep, I'm this I'm is when we say the thing. But! This is the end mean reminder to never be crazy. No, come on, don't do that. Hey, but hey that's, that's just, just a theory. A, theory. a, theory. a film a theory. theory. And, and cuts. cuts. And... <laughs> Thank you so much. Subscribe. Thank you.